I be killing the game. I be racking my brain. My pockets going insane. I be making them games. I'm talking six X, twenty X show. Everybody know track about to blow. Yo, I'm the mastermind. I got the time. I got the rhymes. I got the charm. I got the hey guys, welcome to Chill Zone 2021. We have made it. I'm finally here. This is the first video of the year. I'm so excited to dive into this topic. You know what? Without further ado, let's begin. Today, we're going to be talking about why Origin Trail is the perfect fit for the US FDA as well as GS1. Why is Origin Trail and GS1, why do they seem to be forming these very tight relationships? Well, it all makes sense. When you look at the Drug Supply Chain Security Act, you kind of understand why Origin Trail is gaining all of this adoption because of their structure. So, um, to examine this exact relationship, we're going to be looking at an article called DSCSA, why FDA will not mandate blockchain, EPCIS, or any other specific technology. This article, of course, is released by Dirk Rogers, who is the founder of Rx Trace, where he writes regularly on the intersection between pharmaceutical supply chain, track and trace technology, standards and regulatory compliance. Let's dive right into this article right here. It says there are a lot of discussions going on in industry right now over which approach and which technologies the US pharma supply chain should select to meet the 2023 requirements of DSCSA. People are understandably confused over these discussions. Why should we guess what the FDA will accept in 2023? Blockchain, EPCIS, aren't these debates and discussions just a waste of our time? Why doesn't the FDA just tell us which technology they will accept for DSCSA in 2023? In fact, these questions have become so common lately that I think it's time to examine what is going on there are definitive answers to these questions and they are contained within the dsc etc itself now dirk goes on to explain that it is a misconception to believe that the fda is going to say hey we must everyone must use this technology or this blockchain company or whatever He's saying that that's not going to happen. And the reason for this is because within the actual drug, the supply chain act itself, it says the FDA must provide appropriate flexibility by not requiring the adoption of specific business systems for the maintenance and transmissions of data. One thing that was really interesting to me about this article was when Dirk dove into the meaning of business systems. He said, does the phrase business systems include things like blockchain and GS1 EPCIS? Or does this phrase just mean that the FDA is not allowed to mandate that everyone uses SAP or some other commercial application? It certainly includes the latter, but I think it may also include the former. So for sure, you're not going to be seeing major buy-in into this in the supply chain if you are a proprietary company. Now, we did see some examples of this taking place already when IBM tried to launch their solution and it failed because there were IP concerns. Everyone wanted to know who is going to own the data. No one wants to trust the other person to secure their data which is understandable if you're a competing organization you would not want some your your competitor to have access to all of your data oh hell no oh hell no that's yeah no that's not happening ever Dirk goes on to identify that the FDA is indeed responsible for at least mandating the standards by which data is transmitted now GS1 in his article is a widely recognized international standards development organization and epcis is a standard that identifies a form and format for use in interoperable exchange of electronic supply chain data he says that fits perfectly except epcis doesn't offer any sir Security. Now, if you if you're into Origin Trail and you understand what we do, you should be saying yes. Origin Trail is the answer. Because you're not gonna hate that. Nah. Yeah. 
because it adds that layer of security by utilizing blockchain for data immutability and so on and so forth. So we're getting warmer, but we're not there yet. So let's continue. He says blockchain is just one of many data exchange architectures that could supply that element as we just spoke about. So now we're starting to talk a little bit more about Origin Trail than this article because Origin Trail is a GS1 standards. It's well, not really a GS1 standard. It, it supports a multitude of standards, but it is a standards based network protocol and it supports these GS1 standards. And below this, these, these protocols, these standards, it is supported by blockchain, the Ethereum public blockchain where data is hashed onto it for data immutability. So Origin Trail already is giving a little bit of why it's a perfect fit here, but we still have a little bit more to discuss. So in the conclusion of this article, of, and remember this was written in 2018, he kind of begins to discuss that there is this sort of duality in the supply chain space, you know. There are some who are saying, yes, it's gonna be blockchain, and then there's some who are saying, no, it's not gonna be blockchain. So in his opinion, he says, the FDA does not employ heavyweight IT experts. That's not what they do. The agency is not qualified to select and mandate IT technologies for meeting the DSCSA, and they recognize that. This is not a surprise to anyone, except perhaps to those who expect the FDA to establish technology mandates. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. He's kind of a little bit, uh, you know, he's, he's throwing, you know, he's throwing his weight around there. He's, he, 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 he's a funny guy. I think I would like this dirt guy. Anyway. And of course, you can tell the sarcasm in his next sentence, but everyone has their own opinion. This is America after all. Dirk, I love you. So in conclusion, he kind of ends with this, with this feeling of you're wondering, will we ever truly get interoperable systems? Because the FDA can never tell everyone to follow one particular uh, system or apply to this one particular company. Um, so that leaves everyone as, you know, everyone, every man for themselves. So there needs to be something that can sit between everyone and allow everyone to share data equally in security, in privacy and in sovereignty and allow for total buy-in because there's no vendor lock-in. You're not locked into any one year. You can still use whatever pri proprietary solutions but when it comes to sharing the data, it's just a, it's like using the internet. There's nothing really strange about it. You connect to the network and you share data. Let's fast forward to 2020 and 2021, where we see the US FDA has unveiled their um, new era of smarter food safety blueprint. You know, the US FDA administration unveiled on July 13, the new era of smart food safety blueprint a strategic plan to strengthen the protection of the nation's food supply that builds on the nearly decade old Food Safety Modernization Act. The blueprint discusses standards-based collaboration as a foundational component to tech-enabled traceability and cites the importance of standards bodies like GS1 to enable harmonization with the US and international regulatory counterparts. Now, I was I actually watched the unveiling of this blueprint live and I I was I saw when Frank and Bob were discussing uh, uh the importance of standards in supply chain and how it can affect every American. The same article states, GS1 US was particularly proud to have Frank, the US FDA Deputy Commissioner for Food Policy and Response, a chief architect of the new era, speak with GS1 US President and CEO Bob Carpenter at GS1 Connect Digital Edition. There is no question that GS1 US and their members will play a role to drive the success of the blueprint over the next 10 years. Pandemic or not, there is certainly an opportunity for GS1 standards to help make the food supply chain a safer place. Now, we see that GS1 is getting involved with the FDA because of their open source nature. 
And guess who else has an open source? Unbiased, non-vendor lock-in ecosystem. You guessed it. That's right, Origin Trail. Now, because the Origin Trail technology is open source, much like the GS1 standards themselves, it's easy to say, well, let's integrate the two. Let them become one. I can see when we looked and we saw this being discussed at the Origin Trail liftoff event, where he's talking about these GS1 standards and the Origin Trail network becoming one. And he actually, even Ziga himself in the office hours afterwards confirmed this. Actually, view the clip now. That we see Origin Trail and GS1 converging towards uh, one single point. And this not only goes uh, for uh, GS1 Digital Link and EPCIS 2.0, it's also very much important for their future pl plans about decentralized identities and uh, decentralized knowledge graph that they're... But the underlying promise one day is to create a trusted, open access, decentralized knowledge graph of products in which GS1 identifiers help to connect products across a vast ecosystem of different sources of data. You know, we could call Phil a CTO of GS1. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big thing. Uh, is using as a core lingo, and he's not using that by chance. Then he iterated on that uh, on the, at, the, um, at the liftoff event. I can tell you I've had direct confirmation verbally and in writing from three multinational companies in the last two weeks saying they're gonna be using GS1 Digital Link. That's not because of me. It's because it's the web. It's because it's the GS1 system. It's because it's decentralized. It's because it allows individual people to manage them st their stuff themselves. And we've done it in this open decentralized way. That's why it's being successful. That's why the Origin Trail Network is successful. And that's why you have no trouble getting people like Dominic along to talk about why an organization the size of SBB finds it useful. They could do something else. They could go to someone and get a proprietary system. We all know that. But they've chosen to do this because it's in their interests. And that is a huge plus and a big future for all of us. Um, and he was recognizing the importance of having open networks also for, their, for, for the enterprises. And this is something that uh, didn't happen by chance. This is something, again, that was uh, several times pointed, pointed out by Origin Trail representatives on numerous conferences of, of GS1. And now we see essentially GS1 getting closer to Origin Trail rather than, you know, Origin Trail getting closer to them. Of course, that's mostly because we have always been very huge uh, proponent of, of, of their standards. And it was not IBM, which was the first one using EPCS for traceability in, uh, in, in, in couple with blockchain. It was Origin Trail. If the US FDA is relying on GS1 standards and the body of GS1 to sort of facilitate this new era of food safety and GS1 is moving closer to origin trails decentralized knowledge graph because of its open source nature because of its no lack of vendor lock-in because of its technological marvel because of its ability to share data because it's standards based based on gs1 standards it's easy to see that origin trail can be a perfect fit for GS1 and the US FDA. Considering that Origin Trail is, is actually on the EPCIS 2.0 working group, helping to build standards that, as discussed in the latest Origin Trail office hours. Uh, but it's gonna be a really cool thing and we're already working on implementing uh, the 2.0 EPCS uh, features inside the decentralized EPCS repository. You guys have, I'm sure, seen the, the, the demo on the liftoff event. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this prototype is being uh, further extended and uh, it's going to be very soon that we are going to see some of these features, even though the standard is not fully done, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, it's details that are being figured out. So uh, Origin Trail is going to be one of the first technical solutions that is going to support the new standard and it's going to be fit to, to, you know, to attract all these companies wanting to try try the standard themselves because it's open source so uh, there is no right. really cost to you know getting into it so um, uh, for for a lot of uh, implementation implementators that is 
you know, if, if you're a developer, if you ever try to build something, first thing you do is try you find some open source implementation online. You know, you try to find some code that someone already wrote. Well, you know, that's part of the thing that, that ODM is gonna is gonna offer, and that's gonna be the same logic for the upcoming tools. So for all all the old knowledge tools, basically, uh, so anybody can just use and build on top. When the standard goes live and these entities require uh, the, the blockchain support, the blockchain component of the EPCIS standard, well, Origin Trail will be there to assist.